Good morning, everyone. On today's episode, we have longtime advisor of the firm, Ryan Faust, who's going to be sharing about his passion for longevity, health, and general wellness. We dive into ways to improve your physical, nutritional, emotional, and personal well being. And most importantly, we discuss all of these in the context of increasing one's longevity and quality of life. How does this impact your financial success as it pertains to retirement planning? Tune in to find out. Ryan shares a bit about his personal routine, which is quite fascinating. And also keep an eye out for possibly a podcast first, a mid-show earthquake that strikes New Jersey around the 12 minute mark. Enjoy the show. And as always, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you are listening or watching. What's everyone getting into this weekend? Farming. Ring shopping. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Wait. Oh, actual. Not not the first for, ring. The for, second for my finger, yeah. For yeah, you. I gotcha. Yep. Yeah. You, you're thinking like the that black one that people are doing now? Or I'm thinking something basic. Yeah. You know? That's that's. And knowing me, I'll probably end up with uh, one of those silicon bands. Yeah, exactly. You know? Right. Yep. But uh, uh, all these choices and, you know, I'm a pretty yep. basic guy. So. Mine was shiny. Mine was shiny. And I like that I can see on the inside it's still shiny, but on yep. the outside it's all dinged up and looks like a matte finish. Anyways, it doesn't stay shiny for long. All no. my rings, whenever I got married, um, I'd be working my hands and I would always accidentally smash it and, be, and it like it would stay crushed on my finger. And I'd be like, "Oh God, I got a problem!" I'd have to like rotate it and like hammer it back. So I, I needed the silicone one, but they didn't invent them yet. So wow, yeah, things you never think of, huh? Yeah. Talk about panic that sets in. Yeah. I was like, you my start God, losing like blood that. and you start yeah. losing a uh, feeling in your finger. It's choking my yeah. finger off. Yeah. So I'm like, this is, this is dangerous getting married. Yeah. <laughs> 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 These are the things they don't tell you. Yeah, oh, that's boy. true. Yeah. That's true. Um, all right. Should we jump into it? Get started? Yeah. yeah let's uh, cue the music, Nick. Um, all right. So uh, today we have uh, Ryan Faust with us. Ryan brings close to 30 years of wealth management experience to the table. He is a very well-rounded professional. He has his master's of science and finance from the City University of New York and bachelor's degree in business administration from Rowan University. As an advisor, Ryan specializes in crafting investment portfolios for affluent families, retirees and corporate executives. And that's only the half of it. Uh, Ryan isn't your typical suit and tie finance guy. He's a man of many passions, as as I'm sure he'll be talking about, from winemaking to offshore fishing to skiing to Spartan races, mountain life out in PA, and all facets of home renovations and even some extreme off-roading with Jeeps. Ryan's zest for life extends far beyond the boardroom. Uh, and uh, did I mention he is also a certified captain? That's right. Ryan holds a U.S. Coast Guard OUPV captain's license, further proving that his adventures aren't confined to the boardroom. Uh, so uh, there you have it. Uh, from navigating the high seas of finance to steering through rough terrain off-roading, Ryan Faust's story is one of adventure, expertise, enjoying a healthy lifestyle, and uh, we are truly honored to have him on the show today. Welcome, Ryan. Can we Thank cue you. the clapping? Cue the clapping, clapping sound effects. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> what is OUPV? What does that stand for? Um, it stands for Operator of an uninspect, Uninspected Power Vessel. There wow, you go. It's a mouthful. Passenger Vessel. Yeah. So got already, guys. So yeah. what was that? Just a, it was a fun thing to do? Did you? Yeah, uh, it was one, one summer. I just, a- yeah, I had a boat that we were, you know, it was a sport fish. So we were, we were talking about doing, you know, trips offshore, which we did. And you just wanted to be safer and get back, so to speak. And God forbid something went wrong out there. There's no cell service. You couldn't even tell which way the United States is if you just spun yourself around. So uh, it made sense to just say, hey, let's uh, let's, let's learn the rules of the road above and beyond a basic boating license. So that's how it started. I love that about you. You're always thinking one step ahead, like outside of the box a little bit, one step ahead. What if, um, which maybe that's kind of a good segue into what we're going to talk about here today. Um, So we all know we're financial advisors. We work for a wealth management firm. Our goal is to help people with their retirement savings. And ultimately, we want our clients to be able to enjoy 
their retirement, right? So today we've got Ryan Faust. Um, we're going to touch a bit more on ways that we can all improve our own quality of life, personal wellness, uh, and the importance of all of those aspects and how it pertains to finance and personal wealth management. So really excited for today. Ryan, you, you brought up a interesting topic when we reviewed show notes and we, we yeah. do, we do do some prep for this, these shows, but, um, I like the fact that money doesn't also, or, or always equal health and longevity, right? Talk to us no. about that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess we could all look at Steve Jobs as an example, right? So you can have all the money on earth. Now it wasn't his fault, but point is it's not just about money. And that is kind of incidental to what we do here, which is we, we speak with folks, guiding them on pretty much anything that comes up in life. And once they retire, yeah, maybe they have more time to focus on staying healthy, being healthy and making it last as long as possible. So the point is, it's not just about money. So we try and consult more about um, what else you could be doing to stay healthy, remain healthy, have a happier life. And um, it's not just about the money. So yeah. And this is definitely a, a lighter topic than we usually do, but I also think it's equally or even more serious uh, of a topic uh, and important. You know, uh, I remember when uh, I proposed to Meg the week after, she basically said, show me the car facts. She's like, you need to go to the doctors. You know, I'm not I'm not going through with this unless I know you got a full clean bill of health. She, she booked all my appointments. I got, you know, looked at in 12 different ways. Um but it is important. I mean, I feel like a lot of people, they spend all their life uh, honing in on their craft or taking care of other people, whether it's actually taking care of other people or taking care of other people through your line of work. Uh, and they, they they oftentimes forget to take care of themselves or, or at least, you know, check in with themselves. That's it. I guess no one wants a dog with fleas, Austin, right? Is that That's a true. message? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Ryan, you shared a, a little bit about what we'll dive into today, but I love, you know, the passion that you have for what we do and, and our clients talk a little bit about that. What's, what's so important to you about being a financial advisor? Yeah. So I have per a personal interest outside of what we do for work in, you know, health, longevity, aging. And, um, so we do a lot of reading all day for work, you know, weekends, nights, and I do come across the things that I also have an interest in, which is what we're talking about here today. So most of these podcasts are more financial oriented, but we talked about, hey, let's do something outside the box and try and connect what we do at work into um, helping people live a longer and healthier life. Maybe it benefits them, but it's it's something that's not really um, talked about, advertised, because there's really no financial benefit in it. But it is incidental to what we do. So. We spend a lot of time talking about, you know, what should I do with this home purchase, lease versus finance, alternative investments, all these things, and um, not a lot of time about this stuff. So I have a personal interest in it. So defining aging first, if we just say, hey, what is that? What does that even mean? The yeah. definition to me is something to the effect of we try and figure out what kinds of damage accumulate inside of our bodies, how to reverse that accumulation, and then search for switches that we can flip in human biology to increase lifespan. So that's kind of the premise of the discussion from my perspective. I, I, I like that. I mean, everything yep. we do is a choice. Everything, I mean, usually um, for the most part, we have choices in our life and, you know, the food we put into our body, the exercise we choose to take, you know, uh, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, things like that. Yep. Um, so I, I love that we're going to dive into some of those little things that can really make a, a world of an impact down the road. So yeah. are, you, are you talking about uh, like looking younger? Or are you talking about living longer? You know, yeah. what, what do you mean it's by great, defining of aging? Yeah, that's a great question because it, it all everything that we're going to talk about kind of filters into that. Um, there's like chronological age and biological age. That's a big thing that's been uh, talked about recently in this space of uh, longevity and aging. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot that comes down to it. I mean, we've all seen the folks that smoke, you know, smoke three, four packs of cigarettes a day, or at least I did when I was growing up and it, it does wear on you, right? Was this uh, on the Island? <laughs> Long Island? Or, yeah. Yes, it was on the island, yeah. Is that how you say it now? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. so th there was that. And then there's others that, you know, they, they focused on, um, you know, just eating right, acting right. And th we're going to get into, you know, this whole thing with blue zones and whatnot. But th there's groups of people on, on earth, essentially, that if you follow what they do, um, there are habits that they have that lead to, yeah, you may look better. You'll absolutely be healthier. 
no question. So scientifically proven, but listen, you, you believe what you want to believe and follow what you want to follow. But, you know, a bag of Doritos definitely isn't the, the, the solution. I'll tell you that it's <laughs> the nutrition's not in there. Um, fun to eat, but that's the story. So uh, nice segue there. What what is a blue zone? Can you define that for us? Sure. So the, most of what I follow for the most part are with a handful of look, everyone believes their own, um, you know, whether it's your doctor, whatever you subscribe to. I personally am into folks like Dr. Andrew, Andrew Weil, Gary Brecka. I know there's some uh, rumors about him out there, but Dr. Peter Atia, MIT Age Labs, and then this guy named Dan Butner. Uh, I like that philosophy very much. And he wrote a book called Blue Zones. And in case you're unfamiliar, I think Nick put the slide up there. Um, it's the title of his book, but they're, they're, they're known as areas globally with exceptionally high longevity when compared to the averages. So it's pretty much the oldest and healthiest people on planet Earth, and it's not accidental. How so old are we talking? Um, centenarians. So anywhere between age 90 and, and you know north of 100 years old. So it's normally between 10 and 12 years longer than the average. Wow. Um, it, it is interesting. And it's for the most part, as you can see on this uh, chart, it's five areas around the globe, Sardinia, Italy, Okinawa, Japan, Costa Rica, um, Greece, and a part of California, um, which is an unusual story there. But the concept here is that the way of life and their diet in these zones have led to longer and healthier life versus the norm. And it's important because if you look at scientific studies, genet it, it, it leads you to say genetics play only a 20 or 30 percent role in longevity. And put another way, your choices each day can have up to an 80 percent impact on your health and longevity. So that's right. why it's important. That, I, that's, that's a big thing there, right? It is, it is a choice. I mean, a lot of us mm -hmm. don't have choices um, in life and what we do and how we behave, but it's a lifestyle that these, these people all commonly live in very different areas around the globe. Yeah, it so, is. Yeah, so this is fascinating. So I guess what the author did was they researched just average lifespans. They narrowed it down to these, what, five places, and yep. then they, they said, what do they have in common? Mm-hmm. They right. just spent time so, exactly studying their lifestyle, okay. what, what they do, how they live. And I guess that leads us to this, uh, the power nine principles, which again, I don't want to mimic this, you know, their, their book or, or their, their podcast. Uh, but there's some good facts that we want to pull from there. And there's one called power nine principles and it covers things like activity, moving naturally, um, your outlook in life, meaning having a purpose downshifting or slowing things down your diet. Um, you know, stop eating when you're like 80% full, uh, eat more plant-based if possible, wine this one's tricky because we all love wine i think <laughs> but you know in moderation we all know that this is common knowledge but that's they do drink wine no more than you know one to two glasses a day but it's a day um connections were huge meaning keep family close have a tribe as they call it or a sense of belonging some sort of social involvement community whether it's face-based based involvement something like that so that's super important so those are their, the nine main principles that uh, are around all of these areas so going back to Loma Linda for a second, um, I, I had to look into this a little bit deeper when I saw I was like, wait, seriously, there's a place in California that's one of the blue zones. I figured everywhere would be outside of the United States, but uh, they've been a smoke free city. You know, we joked about smoking a couple of packs of cigarettes a day, but right. they've been a smoke free city for a long time. And I, I think that's interesting that they have exceptionally longer uh, lifespans there relative to other places. Definitely and, a connection. And there's a, an overwhelming percent of the population relative to other places that have an exclusively plant-based diet too, which I found out. So yeah, quite interesting. And it's interesting that it's more than what you're putting in your body too, I guess is what the research mm -hmm. found. It's, yeah. um, you know, who you're surrounding yourself with, right? Um, you know, are you keeping your mind entertained or busy or moving? You know, do you have that sense of belonging? Uh, it's a lot more than just, you know, what, what am I throwing in my body? It's also, what am I surrounding myself with? What am I feeding my mind with? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess it's like stress, you know, it does, it gets into you somehow and it just wreaks havoc. So the more calming you could be, um, you got to balance it out somehow and the feeling of belonging. And, and I think they say, again, being a single guy, I know this fact, but, uh, you know, being alone in life, they say your, your longevity is definitely decreased by, I want to say close to 10 years. So being part of something is super important. It, it really just feeds you from the inside out. Yeah. Find uh, a group with common interests. Exactly. Or, or a dog. You know, there's nothing dog. better than coming dog. home to a, a puppy who's excited to see you no matter what. Absolutely yeah. true. The most loyal companion ever. Yep. Yeah. So I was going to say, you know, I, I kind of break this whole thing down into five main, main topics, topics that I think are worth discussing and focusing on. So there's 
like the physical aspect, nutritional, emotional, personal, and then we'll end with the financial and try and tie it all together because uh, that's ultimately what we do here. Again, this is incidental to what we do at work, but I just thought it would, it's a nice way to kind of give some folks totally. maybe some guidance and things that make more sense, you know? Yeah. So let's, let's start, should we start with physical well-being? Yeah, sure. So physical in, in my mind, it, you know, it kind of means, you know, burnout or rust out. Those are your two choices. You can sit around and, and rust out and then complain that everything hurts and blah, blah, blah. Or you can burn out and at the end of the day say, wow, I, I, I gave it my all up till any age. So there's, it's your choice. There's really no excuses and no one cares that you're too busy. So just keep that for yourself. You're lying to yourself. Your health will absolutely suffer. So take it seriously. And you need to also plan for not enough time. Um, we have that issue because we're working, but as, as retirees, they do have more time. There's just no excuses. So the way I handle it, and I feel other folks can also handle it, is make a habit in the morning when you're getting ready. You don't need equipment. You don't need to drive or walk to the gym. That's good if you do, but just do something as you're getting ready. Stretch, body weight, squats, planks, push-ups, lunge, burpee, and anything. Just do something and make it an unbreakable habit. So that's, you have to start your day that way every day. Now, in these blue zones, it's something called incidental exercise. So they live in these areas, unlike where we live here in the Northeast, where it's relatively uh, steep. So they're gardening, they're walking to the stores. When they walk to the stores, there's hills and stairs and multiple steps. We barely go up one flight of stairs before we say, hey, mom and dad need to move to a, a ranch because they can't do the one flight. Well, they can't do the flight because they, they didn't look at that as a an important focus in their life. You should go up and down those stairs 15 times just because you don't want to lose the ability to walk. And then it's too late. And then we have to deal with that. So I get it. Some people also have other uh, you know, limitations. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the people that could potentially improve from that. I mean, also like walking to the store, right? But how many of us, you know, I, I live in the suburbs. Maybe that's just the way our society is set up here in America where you do need to kind of get in the car and drive places. Maybe older age, we should be thinking about moving into, you know, more of a city environment. Well, there's another, another you're right. And here, but that's another choice. This, yeah, you're right. Living in a city is definitely helpful because you do a lot more walking and a lot more stairs yeah. if you choose to use them. But even in the suburbs here where you can, you, you park your car in usually the closest spot. There are others that you can park we're over way over there where there's plenty of spots. No one's going to ding your car and it's, you could start to create incidental exercise, but no one does that because everyone's in a rush. So if you want to just take the extra three seconds and park further, you'll never have a problem parking and you'll be able to, you know, add a few more steps to your day. Right. So that's, what does it add? Like an extra minute or two? You know, it's not yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. What did you really lose? Right. And what right. did you gain in life though? You know, right. so, but we carry, don't look at it that way. Carry the shopping cart instead of uh, pushing, you know, pushing a, uh, the shopping basket rather than pushing the shopping cart, right? Lift yeah. a little bit. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's the issue in our country. We, we see comfort and as we age and it leads to that whole use it or lose it issues. And that's, that's what we're kind of talking about here. So I was going to say, isn't that a Steve Carell quote? <laughs> it could be. I haven't seen that <laughs> one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, other things that uh, are, you know, that are connected to this uh, breathing thing, just things to do at home. It sounds stupid, but Deep breathing, it oxygen, oxygenates your blood, your brain. There's huge benefits. They say it's better than drug, better than drugs, reduce blood pressure, stress, proven to reduce anxiety big time. So just taking a minute a day, two minutes a day, deep breaths, hold your breath. Just look it up. It's It, it works. Other things that they say are, are beneficial if you have the time is grounding. It's it's a new concept to the level. One second on, on, yep. on breathing and mm -hmm. breath work. That, this is huge. And... Yep. Um, you know, big oxygen in in <laughs> well <laughs> oxygen is it's in every like basic organism right first of all some form of oxygen but i you know i'm a red sox fan up here in boston and for a while jd martinez was on the team and if you ever watch him step up to the plate before almost every pitch he sits there and he he takes this huge breath in, right? And I don't know if it's to calm himself down or get himself more mentally prepared or routine or whatever. It, I, I think that there's actual scientific evidence of the uh, getting this surge in a big breath, a lot of oxygen into his blood can enable him to perform better. Couldn't agree yeah. more on everything you just said. You know, it adds so much 
into your system, dopamine, the, the whole nine yards. So yeah, pr prepares your muscles, prepares your brain. Um, yeah, more energy makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, back to grounding. <laughs> no, that's all right. It's, it's just it's just something else that just shows up in these in habits of some of these folks out there. It's just contact with the earth with bare feet. That's all grounding is. So there, there's there's kind of an electrical charge, so to speak, in your body. It kind of restores the natural electrical balance by discharging into the earth. It does increase dopamine levels. It does improve cardio health, reduce stress, improve inflammation, reduces pain increases blood flow and energy, even swimming in the ocean, it, 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 that adds to it as well. These are just little things you can do on the side, but look it up. It's definitely something that uh, also helps. It, it gonna, sounds silly to us, but it's it's real. I'm going to spare my feet on camera, but in honor of <laughs> these notes, I, I did not wear socks during this interview. That's right. But, Videos from like belly down, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fortunately. You have a pile of dirt <laughs> under your desk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'll just say the next the next topic nutritional is pretty much the uh, the golden goose here. That's this is the main concept of any sort of longevity and aging. Um, everything you eat or drink either adds to your health or steals from it by utilizing resources to deal with what you just put into your mouth or remove whatever you just ate. Um, so your body stops this process to now take out whatever crap you just put into it, or you just added healthy things in there. That's just giving your body the fuel to continue operating so to speak so now this one's this one's i think more straightforward mm -hmm. but um maybe there's some things we need to consider right when picking yeah. out food and, and you're going to bring to us uh i think we've got a couple slides on what yeah. we should and shouldn't be shopping for yeah. right yeah yeah so i mean yeah so i know nick just put that up there but we we can do an entire podcast on this because i this is something else i have a, a a strong personal interest in and um but yes, what's the food chain, the issues, you know, what's in your food, how it's grown, the whole glyphosate thing, um, you know, the soil that, you know, where we get all of our nutrition from, it comes from the soil. Plants don't have vitamins and minerals in them. They get it from the soil, but the soil stripped of it, right? So you're not getting what we used to get years ago because we have to produce much more food now, higher quality, higher, higher volume. And in order to do that, the process is just, it's just not great. So there are things that I do, which we'll get into that help add some of that back. Cause I really do feel that your body just needs these natural resources. So we put up on the screen, some of the, what, what we call the dirty dozen, either foods or fruits that may be heavy with either pesticide and also the clean 15, which is just, just something to be aware of. Um, it's on the other side of that. It's obviously, uh, the better versions of fruits that you can kind of, you know, rest assured that they're perhaps more, uh, you know, less contaminated. Um, and this, so this actually from, pains me because when I look yeah. at the dirty dozen, I'm yeah. saying, you know what? Those are some good snacks. I know. I know. And I look yeah. at, I look at the clean 15 and I'm like, Ugh, that's yep. a lot of vegetables. So yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. Yep. if yeah, we exactly. just shop, if we shop organic on those, on the dirty dozen, does that take care of, uh, you know, no. yeah, it it's better. It's better for sure. But uh, it, it doesn't, you still have to, you know, you could just put a bowl of water with, uh, you know, a little baking soda in it. Let them sit and you mix it up. Let them sit in there, whether it's berries or something, 10 minutes, rinse them off. And it should you know, do a pretty good job of stripping off anything that may be on there. Problem is, they say everything says organic or, or uh, not farm raised fish or something. And it, it's unfortunately, there's a lot of untruths going on in, in the world. So you, you almost need to prepare okay. for that. So yeah. that's just my belief. So a, a baking soda bath for, for all of my yummy blueberries and strawberries. That's the instructions for now. Yeah, all right. Exactly. <laughs> until until we learn something enough. new. Yep. That's easy enough. Exactly. Yep. It's exactly. actually amazing what um, the U.S. allows companies to get away with. You That's know, you go problem. to Europe and mm -hmm. you can't find certain things or things taste a little different, right? Yep. Um, because I feel like they have stricter controls. I don't mm -hmm. feel like I, I believe they do have stricter controls, right? Yeah. Uh, but for whatever reason in the U.S., maybe it's our entrepreneurial spirit. Maybe it's because we're always so uh, progressive with technology, things like that. Uh, we... Uh, we don't have the same, uh, you know, Regulation. constraints. Yeah. Regulations, yeah, yeah. That, that is the whole problem to me. So you know, I'm not trying to be one of those conspiracy guys, conspiracy theory guys, but that's it. So allowed to put all this marketing on cereal boxes or whatnot, heart healthy, ADA compliant, where all these, uh, you know, the FDA or American Heart Association, uh, you know, lowers your cholesterol, all these fancy things, you know, sugar free. Um, things that jump out of you as, oh, that sounds, it sounds great. Or, you know, low calorie. Um, 
there's so much more when you dig deeper into what's inside of it and man, it's some scary stuff. So this whole discussion could be a whole other podcast, but I know we're in the financial industry, but we're, you know, we, we can go down a rabbit hole pretty quickly here, but, um, I'll so for those, Austin. for yeah. those listening and not watching on the dirty dozen, we've got uh strawberry spinach kale, which also includes collard greens and mustard greens. Uh, grapes would be number four, peaches, pears, nectarines, apples, bell and hot peppers, cherries, blueberries, and green beans to close out the dirty dozen. And then so, for the, for the clean 15, we've got, um, we've got avocados, sweet corn, pineapple, onions, papaya, sweet peas, asparagus, honeydew, melon, kiwi, cabbage, watermelon, mushrooms, mangoes, sweet potatoes, and carrots. That, yeah, that. I, I'm looking at these. I mean, some of these you peel, right? Like mm -hmm. kiwi, you don't eat the outside. Carrots, you peel. Sweet potatoes, you usually peel. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if that has something to do with it. Yeah, well, it it, it does. The avocados especially because it's, it's hard for it to get inside. But the way things are grown, um, certain root vegetables, you know, they're absorbing it. It's, so it's kind of inside of it, just like apples, the same story. So I haven't bought conventional apples in probably 20 years. Well, what, just, what's an unconventional apple? Just a, a traditional apple that you get that doesn't say organic, you know? Okay. Um, yeah, so that would be, that would be the difference conventional. <laughs> yeah. The ones you just, the regular ones you buy and then the other ones that are um, more on- Or just grow them yourself, right? Plant a couple apple trees yeah. out on yeah. your farm. Yep, exactly. I, I do have one or two out there, but yeah. And they take, they actually, it's funny, like the ones that grow, um, not wild, but um, they're, they're ugly. They don't look pretty, but they taste spectacular, but no one will grab it off the shelf if it looks like that. So that's part of the problem, you know? They're smaller. They're smaller. They just don't bumps. look pretty. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just so I, I get it. It's marketing. There was so, a there was a company. Uh, I think it was in 2020. We started doing it or like around COVID because they delivered food and it, it was called like Misfit Foods and it was all it was all the like the rejects the organic but like it what didn't look good enough to put out on the shelf um, and it was it was cheaper than traditional organic food because it was the leftovers of what they didn't put out on the shelf just you, purely because of looks it's pretty wild yeah you ate so much because of that <laughs> <laughs> see what i don't what i don't what i have trouble with uh with maintaining a diet around these things is you know i have an acid problem i've been dealing with forever yep, it's same. like you 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 move you go from one thing to another and then you find out the other thing you went to you know, it's just as bad for some other reasons. So you move to something else and you find out, oh, well, you know what? I messed up again. It's like almost impossible, I feel like, to to figure this out, you know, to, to stay yeah. ahead of this. Yeah, I remember talking about that years ago with that book called Dropping Acid, you know, which is talks about how to reduce, right. you know, the, uh, the number of foods that have acid. And it's really surprising of, of how what which foods are acidic and which aren't. Um, but yeah, and that, but that is the thing. You have to figure out what works for you best. And that I guess that leads us to our next discussion, which is diet. That is pretty much the whole part of this discussion of, of just eating right. Everyone knows that, but how do you do it? Um, so these folks around the world, 95% of their diet is plant-based. They eat veggies. And this next thing I'm about to say, and I know all these low-carb people out there are going to hate this, but they are more carb-based foods. Like beans are number one. In You're talking any, about the blue zone areas, the right? The blue zone area or really any other. I, I read another article this morning just because it keeps finding me um, with another scientist from somewhere else that had nothing to do with blue zones. But it always comes back to the same thing. The oldest people eat beans, peas, lentils, chickpeas, you know, uh, black beans. All the stuff oh. I don't like. The so stuff those you don't are, like. Those are carb <laughs> heavy. Those are carb, carb heavy, heavy, but they're yeah. not grains. They're legumes, they, well, right? Then they get into whole grain, whole grains. and They are legumes, exactly. I'll also eat whole grains, nuts. Uh, nuts are huge. They eat nut, a handful of nuts every day. And I'm going to get into, you know, the, the, which ones to get. But um, that is known to reduce mortality risks and even reduce metabolic syndrome, which in case you don't know, it's, it's a group of conditions that happens as you age, such as like heart disease, diabetes, stroke, high blood pressure, blood sugar, abdominal fat, these things that just happen as you get older. So you want to try and prevent that so you don't get to that point. It's hard to reverse if it's even reversible. So processed foods. Now this, I think Nick just put up on the screen. This is what it's all about. I think it's like 60% of our country, if not more, um, live off of processed foods. It is probably one of the worst ways to live. 
And I know we joke around in the office because one of the guys always says salmon here. And I look at it and I'm like, oh man, is that, that's definitely not, uh, you know, line caught or whatever. It sounds so healthy though. It does sound healthy. Everything <laughs> sounds so healthy. Good that's when the I issue. Order. <laughs> that's the issue. Yeah. You, you just need to look beyond the marketing and recognize what you're actually eating. That's the whole problem here. Um, so, and, and these folks also in, in the world also don't eat red meat, believe it or not. We all love steaks, but Look, in moderation, I'm sure it's fine. It's just the processed foods that, that, that are the issue. Hmm. That's what leads to all these other problems. So the, conven- the, the, the solution is convenience, right? At my desk, I keep all sorts of good stuff just because the, the, the easier it is to grab, the more likely you're going to eat it. But the processed yeah. foods are always ready to go because they have all these preservatives in it so you can just grab it. But you need healthy solutions. It's, it's interesting. Like We're probably going to throw more money at – you know, and more money has already probably been thrown at uh, curing cancer than Preventing what could it. have been saved if we had just gotten rid of lobbying I know, I for know. all the sugar and I know. and processed food, uh, you know, seed oils and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Just solve the problem with another Band-Aid rather than uh, removing the problem yeah. itself. I get it. I mean, that, that, that's, that's the aggravating thing because other countries have jumped on – board with this and we we just we just haven't um so personally that's why i gravitate to this stuff um but there are other things you can kind of work into your diet and there's some really interesting things like like these guys right here these uh little brazil nuts <clears throat> you know they say what five to seven of them something like that every few days um nutrient dense they're high in a, a mineral called selenium which is also in fish huge immune system builder helps with mood disorders thyroid support it raises your testosterone uh lowers blood sugar so hmm. these are some of the things that they eat um, that whole stop eating when you're 80% full rule that they do, um, in these zones, um, that leads to a longer life. Simple as that. We've talked about the alcohol thing, moderation. Good luck with that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> another major focus in this, in this, uh, in this world is gut health. So that is a, a huge one. Um, you know, the whole, listen to your gut. That's not what it means, but it's a nice way to remember this. It's super, super important. They say, that your gut is responsible for something like 70 to 80% of your entire immune system. And there are this. more back. Yeah. It's, they say your, your body is made up of more bacterial cells, something like, I don't know, 50 or a hundred trillion or something like that versus human cells. So it says we're more bacteria than we are kind of human cells. You may want to focus more on keeping that healthy. And they say an unhealthy gut can increase many health issues such as heart attacks, heart attacks, stroke, dementia, and a healthy gut assist with type 2 diabetes, you know, those issues, mood and mental disorders, uh, serotonin, oxytocin, dopamine, it's all influenced by the gut. So the solution is to seek quality prebiotics, which are foods that fuel the beneficial bacteria, and then look for probiotics, which are the actual live mi- microorganisms found in food that add to your gut microbiome. Um, you can do it through supplements, you can do it through food. Um, obviously, food is usually always better, but you would look for things like um, you know, low sugar Greek yogurt, fruits and vegetables, whole grain oats, nuts, beans, asparagus, fermented foods, definitely increase fi- fiber. And like Nick has up again, avoid highly processed foods and nuts, things like ice cream, chips, candy, soda, the things that it should be relatively obvious, but that's, and yes, the, um, the processed foods include bacon and, you know, all those processed meats, deli meats. It's unfortunately, um, what it does, it just hurts your gut microbiome, adds to inflammation. And I think they did a study of like 20,000 people a couple of years ago. Um, they say diets high in processed foods resulted in a 20% increased risk of death due to all causes. So hmm. it's just decisions you make. Yeah. That's- I mean, I can't imagine having a fan. Like, what do you, every, anything that's easy to eat, easy to make, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is practically not good for you. You know, all this it's stuff tough. is good. Yeah, it's tough. Look, I mean, those, order- those kids yeah. just want to chow down a bunch of mac and cheese, uh, it seems like, <laughs> every other night. But, uh, yeah, no, they, it, it is difficult. It is. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it, it's tricky, but it's whatever habits you raise your kids with. And hopefully it's, uh, you know, it, that that's a hard part. I get it. Right. But, you know. Uh, well, I and, and I guess at the end of the day, the Grim Reaper isn't going to say, oh, it's all right. They had a family, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> he he no was busy cares. with work, he, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay that he treated exactly. his body a little yeah. worse, you know? Right. right. Yeah, he, he earned it. Right. Um, and the other one, which I, I hate even having this discussion because we all know it, but it just sneaks its way into everything. It's the whole sugar thing, reducing sugar at all costs. It just finds its way into everything. And yeah. the word diet 
man, it's a, I feel like that's almost worse because um, when you read what a, a, an artificial sweetener is, the definition is something like a, a chemical used to sweeten food or drink, and it's something like 500 to 700 times sweeter in your body and, and uh, you know on your tongue than sugar. But it's a chemical, so why would you put a chemical? It just doesn't even make sense. Um, yeah, anyways. stick to stick to natural naturally occurring sugars right like honey agave yeah. maple yeah. syrup like pure Honey's organic the, maple best, syrup yeah. um versus like the processed stuff yeah yeah so it just it does find its way into everything and before we started this discussion i know adam and i we were talking about you know if you look at some of the things that we have here that you don't think sugar is in like ketchup um there's, i think it's the second and fourth ingredient in ketchup in two different forms um and you, you look at that same product in europe or somewhere else it's uh it's a completely different it's not high fructose corn syrup. It's something co completely different. So it's just something to be aware of. So look out for it. So my brother-in-law is starting a uh, an ice cream company, and uh, he has a lot of allergies. So th their big thing is um, it's all it's all locally sourced and organic, but uh, also top nine allergen free, which is great. Yeah. And, you know, I was the beneficiary a couple summers ago of all of his experimentation and uh, it grows on you, right? It takes this, like you, there's an adjustment period to cut out sugar and yeah. you literally have withdrawals. If you have, if you're used to a diet of heavy sugar and then you just cut it out altogether, but then you start to really enjoy a little honey in your banana bread instead of, instead of white granulated sugar or some syrup, um, it, it takes some getting used to, but it's nice. Yeah. Big, big fan of honey. Yeah. Yeah. I need to do a detox. I need to, you need yeah. to send me away somewhere where I can do a week where people just monitor me because I can't. Well, even, like, <laughs> even like the sugar free stuff, I think your body still like, it doesn't process it the same way as sugar, but it, it, you can still have like a, bodily reaction as if you're eating sugar, like to Diet Coke, if you're drinking Diet Coke, which is sugar-free versus, or Coke Zero, something like that, versus regular Coca-Cola, like your body still has that uh, reaction. Uh, I don't know if it's the insulin yeah. spike exactly, but you you process it in sort of similar ways, even though there's no actual sugar in it. My body's straight rejection with that stuff. I drink <laughs> a little bit and within the next 30 minutes, I am, you would have thought I was hungover. You know, that's I a just, good thing. I just can't. I guess that's a good thing in the long run for you. Yeah. You know, you know I guess that leads us right to the next thing. You know, Austin, you're saying about we need to ship you away for a week. Um, I know, Adam, this is your favorite. I know you're big with uh, fasting. Yeah. But that's another another mention in this kind of space is uh, fasting or autophagy, um, which is essentially getting rid of the old mutated cells in your body, which may ultimately turn into disease or cancer. Um, so you could kind of purge through fasting or diet. So autophagy is known as the body's way of turning back the clock and creating younger cells. And it declines with age. So cells that no longer work or may do harm are allowed to multiply, which is the kind of the main agenda of cancer cells. Yep. There's a lot of new studies here. And the only way to boost it is really exercise or fasting. So and that's where the whole this whole keto diet thing came from. Fasting to me is great. It's great for not just uh, autophagy, but hormonal imbalances too, and re just a full body reset. Usually, like once a month, I'll do like a one to two day fast, hmm. just water, black coffee, and um, I, I saw recently there was a study. If you do a seven day water fast, yeah. Uh, it has a 70 to 90% reduction in cancer. I heard, I heard if the you same do that thing, seven but, days. Yep. One, I think it's once a year, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, a seven day water fast. Yeah. What's, go what's ahead, a, Austin. What, I see what, you read. What's a water fast? <laughs> just, 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 you're allowed to drink, drink water. water. Yeah. It's not it, like yeah. for seven days. You don't have anything else. That's correct. P pretty much. It, the, the, yeah. I've seen the one that's 72 hours, which and they, every 10 hours, they show you what's happening in your body. Um, uh, but sometimes they have, you could drink bone broth. Um, I've so seen that too. Yeah. yeah. Or so. You could put, you could put some like electrolytes, a little, right. a little salt in your water or something yeah. like that. Um, but you're, you don't need like, just cause we're hungry, we don't need to eat. And, um, you know, society is, set up to say that breakfast is the most important yeah. meal of the day and all that, right? That's, that's marketing. That's yeah. at the end of the day. Agreed. 
This is all yeah, crazy to me. I can't imagine only drinking water for seven days. Yeah, I, I, I guess this is a good time also to remind everyone that none of us are doctors. Yeah. <laughs> Do your own research. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's two more things worthwhile mentioning before we move on to the next one. But um, the stem cell thing, I know that's been talked about. Um, stem cells are essentially the body's raw materials from which all other cells with specialized functions are generated. And there's a huge connection to longevity and aging. That's just worth, worth a look at. Um, same advice as above. It's, it's funny how it all comes back to you know exercise, good sleep. Avoid toxic products like laundry detergents, chemicals. I know, it, it, you know, saying this to people, they're like, I'm not going to stop using Tide, but look into it. Um, there's something very, very strongly connected between some of those things. Um, white vinegar, also, right? You can, yeah, just, that's, you can honestly, if you throw like a cap full of white vinegar in your laundry oh, deter man. detergent dispenser, yeah, uh, your clothes will not smell like vinegar. They'll come out bright and cleaner than laundry detergent. Yeah. You won't know a difference, and it's much healthier for you. That that stuff is kryptonite to me. I'm not, not a fan of vinegar, but I get it. I've heard that too, you know. Um, but there's also food and drinks recommended by scientists like berries, turmeric, green tea, olive oil, nuts, broccoli, ginger kale. Um, they help stimulate stem cell production, so something that's worth looking into. And one thing that popped up somewhere over the years, and I just – I always looked into it. I just – it was an unusual food. It's called um, – it's known as soursop graviola, custard apple, or anyone that lives in the Jupiter, Florida area, guanabana. Um, it's a fruit that's very rich in antioxidants. And in case you've never defined what an antioxidant is, it just antioxidants help prevent cell damage to DNA that can contribute to aging. And this is what this whole thing's about. Um, they re it reduces inflammation. It manages blood sugar. And the best part of this fruit is outside of our country, it's a common herbal remedy for cancer treatment, which is just, it's, it's mind-blowing. It contains something called ACGs or acetogenins, and they've been shown to kill cancer cells without harming healthy cells. Mm -hmm. And they said they also increase uh, T cell production, which are known to kill cancer cells and other damaged cells. Um, you can go to Memorial Sloan Kettering's website. They, they mention it on there. It's not a solution. The patient side of it, they don't say much. But then the doctor side, if you click on the, the link that says uh, for healthcare professionals only, they do reference it. So it's just mm -hmm. something worth – it's just – yeah, where, do you, where do you get you that? You never know. Where do you find that? Is that just in every <laughs> supermarket or like yeah, do you have no, it shipped not, in? Yep. I, I actually did because I'm one of those Alibaba. jobs that are into this stuff. So <laughs> there's a, a place called Miami Fruits or Miami something or other. You go to their website. It's not cheap, but they'll ship you these unusual fruits. And, we, you know, me and my, my daughter and I, we try it. And it was kind of cool. It sounds like that. guanabana tastes like crap. <laughs> it does not. It's, it's, does actually, no, it's actually good. No, it yeah. does not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. good. It's good for you and it tastes good. Uh, yes. Right. What's it taste yeah. like? It, it's a, 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 it's, a, it's kind of a combination of a pear and like an apple and custardy. All right. I can uh, doubt that. But yeah. But good luck getting them. It's tricky to get. But uh, anyway, I just had to mention that because it was kind of uh, interesting. So the emotional mental side of uh, whether it's retiring or healthy aging, um, that's we see that when we're talking with folks as we take them through their, you know, accumulation or savings phase of life. And then they retire and then through re retirement, um, that's a, 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 another common theme for longevity is to be social, keep busy, get out of your head. Um, just too much free time is bad in your natural state of, of your mind is is kind of worry if you have nothing else to think if you're unengaged. Um, one of the guys here called it lizard brain or caveman brain or something like that. But <laughs> you're, that, that, you know, protect yourself from a saber toothed tiger. Um, but you, you absolutely need to worry less and, you, and manage your potential worry um, by getting that dialogue that you sit there and sometimes your mind just wanders. You need to stay engaged in things. And yeah. we see that because folks, when they retire, they stay very busy for the next few years. Then, OK, they check the boxes of, of, of their lifelong dreams and things do slow down. Uh, so you can fix that. You can fix that if you choose. Yeah. You just whether it's exercise or mindfulness, yoga, meditation, it requires work, but you will have a happier life. Yeah, it's yeah. actually it's actually amazing how often I see that with uh, retiree clients, clients that yeah. I've been working with when they're you know running their business or whatever they're doing, and then they retire. It's like uh, you know their brain was filled with all the stresses of work and life and this and that, and then they retire, and all of the work stuff gets replaced with just worrying about small stuff. 
-hmm. you know, like the conversation shifts from, uh, you know, talking about how great their life is to, you know, now I go to a meeting with, with, with them and it's, have you heard about this? You know, should I be worried about that? You know, I can't believe so-and-so did this. And it's, it's, you could tell it, it, it does, it does wear on you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's exactly it. The, when you hear the discussions, you're like, Oof, well, we got two different worlds going on here. Right. The, the things that you know are, are major problems to you guys. Holy cow. It's uh, you're right. You need to be engaged in something. So that's not as you know, on the forefront of your. But also life. a key to that is, is talking it out and talking through your problems. And we, you know, as advisors, we sort of act as a counselor in some regards for our clients. So mm-hmm. it, you know, maybe that, Maybe I, we are their outlet in that sense. Yeah. Go well, and that's pretty much how this whole this podcast started. Is is that this comes up pretty much for the last almost thirty years talking with clients about everything, and we said, look, we talk all about. We'll, we'll get to the financial stuff, but this is a major focus for some of these folks. Really, it should be for everyone. But point is, we consult about everything, and it's just incidental to what we do. I happen to have a personal interest in it, as I'm sure everyone else hopefully does. But you're right. We, we are consultants to everyone as well. So should we talk a little bit about your personal routine and then get into the, the financial stuff? We, yeah, we could do that. Yeah. So I guess we're going to quickly go down a, a rabbit hole here. Um, so, you know, <laughs> we'll try not to. Let's keep we'll it high level. We, yeah. Okay. Um, OK, so. Personally, listen, just when I wake up, I, I do it a little differently. And as I said to you guys before, the way the world works, no one's going to push this information on you. I seek it out on my own, and this is what I do for me. And ironically, just I want to say a week ago, if you go to CNBC's website, I think the same gentleman we were talking about, Dan Butner, they ask him his morning habits and what does he do in these blue zones. So it's interesting timing. I have no connection to him, but it's uh, – anyway, that's just my view. Um, I think there's a, a that proverb that says – uh, take food as your medicine or medicine as your food. And it was also Steve Jobs, one of his last uh, words of advice. So I, I do believe in that. I, I look for nutrition and food and uh, I rather not depend on the medicine. If it, yeah. you know, God forbid that ever comes down to that, but that's the way I do it. So you try and think of your body like a savings account, meaning every single thing that goes in through your mouth is either adding to your nutrition or it's stealing it by utilizing resources that would have been available for other bodily functions. So that's the way I view this thing. Mm-hmm. So when I wake up, or I should say, before that, I, I, instead of watching TV, I just crave information and knowledge. So I do a ton of reading on this stuff, and it just finds me somehow. So it's just have to <laughs> keep Steve things. Jobs at work. Uh, I was going to say that's the <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. So, all right. After I wake up, I, I do take like a, a little bit of like, self, just like literally just like my dirty finger and, and just stick it into a bottle that no one else uses of, of Celtic salt or Celtic salt as they call it. Um, and just put a little on my tongue and it just, I'll, I'll, it, it prepares essentially your cells to accept hydration. So you just drink water. Sometimes it doesn't get absorbed into your cells. So you need to hydrate. You wake up essentially dehydrated. So the Celtic salt for me versus table salt that's stripped of, um, you know, iodized and stripped of uh, the way they prepare to put the whole process. It has more of the minerals that your body needs. So I'll drink like a half glass of water and, um, you know, sodium, potassium, magnesium, I think chlorides in there as well. Um, that's where I start. So after I drink a half glass of water, I go over to the coffee and this is where, this is where it, I guess it gets tricky. So there's multiple ways to make coffee. I, I do it one of two ways. I do the French press, which I, I feel personally is, is you're getting more of the benefits of the coffee. I drink decaf for the same reasons that Austin uh, had before, which, you know, just cut back on a caffeine, you know, issues from uh, years ago that I, they say I should cut back on coffee. Back when um, you were just coughing cigarettes. Back when I was exactly <laughs> right. Back in those days, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So uh, on the island. Yeah, so uh, back, back on the island. Days, exactly. <laughs> yep. Um, so I, I'll do it that way, or I try and avi- avoid the pods that are plastic. You're putting boiling water through plastic. Nothing good's coming out of that that right. that plastic pod. So I get the ones that they're 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 paper on top, and the bottom is some sort of. Uh, healthier for now, uh, filter that, you know, if you, if you do use one of those, um, you know, Keurig machines. So I do put some almond, almond milk in there and honey. And yes, I'm aware of the, the almond milk issues now with the, the carrageenan that's in there, which is a thickener and, and it actually kills your gut bi- microbiome, increases inflammation. So I look out for that, but anyway, it's, it's in a lot of the milks. You should look out for that. Um, organic local honey is a sweetener. Um, the decaf process, I'm aware of that as well. It's nothing good in, in, decla- in, in decaffeinating coffee. They use something called methylene chloride. There's many ways that they do it, but that one you should look out. They use that in 
paint and chemicals and adhesives. So that's how they strip out most of right. the caffeine. So the way I go about it is the it's called Swiss water process. It's a much better way. In the coffee, I put a few drops of something called fulvic acid humic. Uh, it's alkaline. It has like 77 trace minerals. What are trace minerals? It's the things essentially that's supposed to be in your food, foods that I mentioned before that are essentially stripped out because of the way we grow foods. So you're not getting the things that you need. Hmm. So I try and add that back in there because why would you not? Also has some electrolytes in it. It has no taste. Helps with the absorption process. So when you're taking vitamins or whatever you're doing, it helps just your body extract what it needs and, 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 and enter your body. Immune system booster, inflammation, brain health, gut health, doesn't hurt you. So I add, I add that into the coffee. While this is brewing, they'll take something called, next rabbit hole, called NMN and an appropriate methylated vitamin. So that's that's my process in the morning. Um, take a genetic, genetic test once in your lifetime, not the 23andMe stuff. It's a different test. You have to see what sort of vitamins you're either deficient in or can't process uh, that need to be methylated for you. And methylation essentially transforms a vitamin into the usable form in your body. So it saves that one step. Sometimes you can't, your body can't do that. So you're not getting what you need. Look into it. Um, this NMN, uh, it's made, it's in this country, it's still being tested by the FDA, so it might be a little a little early to discuss it, but um, it's made popular by a guy named David Sinclair. He's a professor, professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School. There's a huge connection to longevity here, so also worth looking into. Um, hmm. But as we age, the levels of NAD plus in our body decrease, and that NAD plus plays a major role in energy production, DNA repair, immune function, and NMN is a precursor to NAD plus. So there's huge anti-aging benefits to it goes the list goes on similar on. to so, antioxidants, right? It, it, yeah. In, in a much bigger way. Exa yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's definitely worth a look here. So I, I take that. Um, coffee's almost done. So then I'll take a, a turmeric, which I, this is like all within five minutes of waking up. <laughs> <laughs> five minutes. Oh yeah. No, I, yeah. I and, and I'm and, sure you don't have yeah. this internal dialogue about why you're doing this every day. But no, I just do it. Just do the process <laughs> and make it a habit. So you don't, yeah. Then you just do it and you don't know why, but you're yeah. like, all right, I did the homework and hopefully it just works. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I take turmeric, which I think is like a wonder supplement. Um, it's amazing for inflammation. Yeah. Also helps reduce metabolic syndrome, arthritis, cholesterol, anxiety, muscle soreness. Um, I take a D3. That's a, that's a huge one. Um, Almost yeah, everyone's I, vitamin D deficient. Everyone's yeah. deficient, especially if you live above, what is it, 37 degrees um, latitude in our country, which is like Washington, somewhere around there north. There's You just can't get enough sun. And the way you're dressed, it's just – and the way we live, you're just not going to get outside. So yeah. you, you, you definitely need that. So that's an easy one to test for, huge benefits. Um Fish oil, I'll take one of those, Just but find a quality one. Benefits are similar to turmeric. Um, when I say quality, a lot of them you think you're getting fish oil, and it, and it is, but there's, it, there may be a lot of pollutants or mercury or something if it's not a high-quality one. So um, look for that. Good for your and heart for, as well, right? Good for everything. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, unless you eat a lot of fish, right? Um, then after I shower, I'll do the, the same thing I said before, which is I'll, I'll – you know, if you go to the gym regularly, you're fine. But uh, if you don't, you you have to do something before you're during getting dressed. Earn your socks, earn your shirt, earn your pants. Meaning, put your socks on, then go do 20 push-ups, put your shirt on, do 20 squats. But you have to make it a habit and just work it into your life. You need to move every day. Um, no excuses. It's just it has to be part of it. You brush your teeth. That's a good habit. Add something else in there. Just you don't need to go to the gym if. You're doing other things, but get your heart moving, get things flexible, stretch out, do anything. Just no more excuses. That's that's the story. Um, I'll have a, maybe like a Greek yogurt, overnight oats. I'll throw in some chia seeds, which are great for blood sugar management, you know, fiber, quality protein, iron, magnesium. It's just keep it on the counter. Take a spoon of it, put it in there. It's just make it convenient. Otherwise, you will not do it. Hmm. Um Overnight oats, you know, whole grain, organic. Yes, I know about the glyphosating oats. I get that. Um, but, you know, add crushed walnuts and chia to it. Do it the night before. It's nice and convenient. Just grab and go in the next morning in case you're busy. Listen, that's what works for me. Check it out on your own. Again, we're not doctors here, but these are things that are, for me, just work. Yeah, I, I read the the 5 a.m. Club. Have you read that book? Yeah, no, it's, I haven't. No, it's yeah. a good one. Um, but the message is just win the morning. So, you know, with this routine, you're just starting yourself off on the right foot. So, you know, I, I don't do nearly that many things, right. and, you know, I could probably benefit from all of them. Um, but yeah, definitely 
starting on down the right road is important. Sets the stone, sets the stage and the tone for the day that you want to have. Right. Just yeah, map out some 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 habits that you want to do and just stick to it. It's almost that simple, but you have to do it. You know, and that's hopefully what this discussion leads people to do is just say, hey, you know what that that kind of maybe that makes sense or maybe it doesn't, but just start doing it. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. So, so your personal routine here is is fascinating. Uh, do you have any? <laughs> Uh, funny or unexpected experiences you've had while incorporating any of these types of things into your life? Cause they all seem pretty easy and pretty logical and make sense, but you know, people struggle with it. I think a fair lot. I struggle yeah. with it a fair lot, yeah. right? A yeah. lot of what's good for you doesn't taste good. A lot of what's, you know, uh, good for you isn't fun to do. Like, has there been anything that happened in your life where like, wow, that's really works, but you know what? I hate it. Or, you know, wow, that didn't work at all. Uh, you know, anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, that the whole apple cider vinegar thing, um, to me, it's kryptonite. I, I just, it's the most nasty smell. I can't, I just can't do it. And there's huge benefits to that. Um, doesn't work for me. Uh, the cold shower thing or cold plunge thing, that's a another huge focus in this whole following. Um, I've seen a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. Wim Hof, right? Yeah, Wim Hof. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it, it worked for him. He was a you know an athlete. Um, and there is benefits to inflammation if if you have knee pain, or else there are benefits. And you start I started with turning the shower down to ice cold and it happened to be in winter. So maybe the pipes were like outside and it was I maybe made it 15 or 20 seconds. And I literally felt like my heart was going to explode. And, I'm, and, and I live alone. And my, I couldn't imagine my daughter being like, what the hell? <laughs> Find my dad laying yeah. there. So I, I uh, no, um, I, I tried that for a little bit. It didn't work. So I'll say with the cold shower thing, yeah, I, I find it a lot easier to go from hot to cold once like at the end of your shower and then yeah. come out versus trying to get into a cold shower. Neutral There's cold, like, yeah. From, yeah from being out of the shower to getting into cold water is like, that's wild to me. I know that the benefits are Shocking. huge. You feel, your lungs feel like they're like getting pulled out of your body. It's crazy. No. Yeah. It, it, they say you need like something like three minutes and you develop these, these, your body floods itself with these cold shock proteins, which are just supposed to be spectacular for you, but you got to get there. Yeah. yeah. So you could probably work up to it, but like, I think apparently it gives you like a high, like cocaine does too. It definitely does. Yeah, yeah. You come out, you, your head is clear and you feel, yeah, you really feel great. So it is something worth exploring if you can pull it off. But again, we didn't tell you to do this. <laughs> Don't go have a heart attack. I'm yeah. just saying it's uh look into it. It's, it's interesting. Um, okay. So yeah, I guess the last part of the discussion, the financial part, you know, that's, that's the, uh, I guess you kind of wrap it all together about longevity and aging. And this is the easy part for us. As, as they say, you really can't yeah. get blood from a stone. And we, we can only selfly, safely generate as much income from assets as we can. And it goes without saying that you simply need to live within your means. And that's part of most of the dialogues we have with clients, right? You can't run your life like the government. I know people might get upset here, but we can't always look to increase revenue, never looking to cut spending, unless you have more than enough in assets. If you do, that's great. But that's that's the balance that we try and um, are, are always dancing around with with folks. So- Well, let's, it's, let, let's yeah. elaborate on that yeah. for a minute because, you know, the returns are the returns, right? The market mm -hmm. does what the market's gonna do. Mm -hmm. But what we can control is how much you save and how much you spend. And yeah. when we think about it in the context of, hey, I can do these things and I want to enjoy my retirement more and live a longer life, that means I need more money to support that longer lifestyle. And, you know, it, it really brings you back to what you can control. I can spend less. I can save more. Uh, there's probably something out there I'm subscribed to that I shouldn't be, you know, <laughs> like whatever yeah. it is. Um, it adds up and it compounds over time. And so I think allowing once you realize, like if you want to do these things to improve your health, improve your longevity, improve your active lifestyle in retirement, the length of retirement, you have to prepare for that as well. Right. Yeah. From a financial perspective. Yeah. And, and that's kind of the point to it. That's a, that's, a, that's a good point because, yeah, we're talking about how do you make your body last as long? We're always focused on the financial end of it, but we're trying to kind of combine this with, um, you know, what good is all the money. savings if you're not going to enjoy it and not right. going to, you know, live a long right. time and, and uh, right. you know, so we, reap we, the benefits we're to stretch of those both rewards. Of right, exactly. It, it's not just about making your money last to the end. You want to get there as well and enjoy the benefits of the money. Um, but that is the focus here is that w because we live longer, we have more issues. And this is the whole discussion with Social Security that people are living longer. So it's just 
and your own investment uh, savings, which is what this this part of the discussion is about, that, that we need to stretch it out longer and provide you with income further, deal with the inflation issues. Look what just happened over the last three to four years. Killer. We, yeah. we always talk about inflation, uh, but everyone always ignores it because they don't see the benefits of it or, or it's not tangible, right? But we are always preparing for it and owning assets that are kind of inflation protected. Um, but well, I remember growing up in the 70s and 80s and houses cost like, I don't know, 20 or 30 grand back then. Right. Good luck even buying a car for double that value today. Just a car. The houses, forget it. So, and then your taxes. I was just talking to one of the guys in the office this morning about, um, you know, his car insurance. And same story. Car insurance, you know, every year, you know, increasing at, at double digit rates. So, these are things. If you're fully retired, you still have to deal with, and you know, property taxes, all those, all those things, healthcare costs. So. The inflation rate that's stated, that's one thing, but what your inflation rate is, the things we need to prepare for for you, definitely aren't what CPI is. So that's what we have to build into the plan here. I think, I think you know, like we're, we're talking a lot of medical advice and, you know, uh, I we were doing a financial plan this morning ahead of this recording, but, you know, so few people think of us as doctors, quote unquote, but really at the end of the day, you know, you should be reviewing your financial plan, at least annually, or as things materially change within your life with your financial advisor. And, you know, I think we can play an important role in, you know, having those checkups, if you will, but maintaining that people are still on track, they're still saving what they say they're going to save, spending yeah. what they say they're going to spend, and, you know, ensuring that their retirement can be fulfilling. Yeah. So that, yeah, that leads us to this, this next part, which is, you know, we're, we're true 100% fiduciaries. So we need to kind of build that roadmap roadmap for you with a financial plan, which, which covers everything from spending to in uh, savings, to inflation protection, tax management, asset location, estate planning, and then ultimately asset transfer inheritance, the yeah. whole process along the way. So that's done through total return, and we're, which means we're trying to get uh, capital appreciation to pr for inflation protection and cash flow along the way, getting to total return. So it's getting you on, you know, or folks on, in, online or on board with uh, reasonable expectations. And we've heard, we've heard it from many people. I just need nine percent return with no risk. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. All okay. right. Now it, now it begins. So, um, you know, I remember WorldCom, Lucent, AOL, Citigroup. I hate saying that, but, but uh, you know, AIG, the names that, look, you get, you only have one shot to make a mistake and your money's gone. So we need to remove the emotion from making mistakes or the fear of missing out. There's no room for error here. So we do, we are confronted with people, with folks that are sometimes either too conservative, which hurts them in the long run from the higher cost of yeah. living associated with the longer life, or sometimes too aggressive due to the need to try and shoot for unsustainable returns to fund a costly lifestyle. So that's the balance that we have to walk here. It's, it's hard to have those tough conversations with clients when they come up, but I think it's very, at least for me, I mean, th those conversations to me are almost more fulfilling than the ones where I am saying you have plenty of money, you're great in great shape, you know, it, you're, you're making more, from our perspective, I feel like we're making more of an impact on our clients' lives in those. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, Adam, like, you know, that, that plan you said you did this morning, um, that the value of this and, you know, being a consultant for folks essentially and holding their hand through good or bad, um, here's the value. I, I remember October of 07, I should say three months prior to October 07, and also three months prior to, well, it was probably like November of 2019, like well before COVID. And each time period, I had some folks retire. We did the plan. And, you know, I remember taking the phone calls. It was a really hard discussion, but we reviewed their plan. We originally initially tested for the worst case, which is what if you retired tomorrow and then the market immediately went down? What? How would you, would you still be okay? Okay. So, we had that discussion. We kept them on track. We made appropriate adjustments along the way. Um, and then as time moved on, thankfully, it, they, they ultimately worked out, right? Yeah. So we did a bunch of hand-holding, but that's mm -hmm. that's it. And I know, Austin, you and I had a, had a, a, a couple people that were well, the opposite. They were the nervous type. They did the wrong thing at the wrong time. And, and then after the market went back up, can I get back in? And we're like, oh, my gosh. So we all have you know, every type, but we're here to get everyone through whatever it is. Right. Yeah. And I, I think this correlates well with the whole health conversation too, because, you know, what's fun is usually not what's good for you, you know, from a health perspective and then from a, from a, an investment perspective, right? Like, and, you know, w you know, 
we need to pay attention to both what we're putting in our bodies and how much we're putting in our bodies. And then also what, what are we putting in our portfolios, right? What does your portfolio look like right now? Is it a collection of one-off investments that you bought and, you know, haven't looked back on, you know, or have you said, all right, my life is X, Y, and Z. And so I need to get all these many investments together to make sure they're playing off of each other in the right way, in the right environments to get you through your retirement, right? It's a lot more than just throwing things in. It's not, you know, what, what you throw in your body, right? It feels good, you know, when you're eating all the junk food and all that crap, right? It's exciting. When you go in and you're buying your meme stocks or whatever the hot investment yeah. of the day is, it feels good, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good for right. you in the long run. You know, it's really important to have a purpose, a purpose in both what you're eating and a purpose in, in how you're investing and, and how you're looking at your financial lives. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it definitely swings both ways. We saw it in 2022 and 23 with tech stocks, right? Tech was down maybe 33% one year. And then what does a 33% decline require to get your money back? 50% gain. So we have a loss like that. You need a huge gain just to get just to get your money back. And, and they did it. it. They did it. But that's a hell of a ride. Nowhere, it's like, right. right yeah. Yeah. Nowhere. Yeah. yeah. So so that's the thing. So we try and keep keep folks on track. And it's OK to have some of the growth in there. Of course, you need it, but um, not too much. And, you know, I hate to jump all the way to the end, but there's a slide that I felt was valuable to talk about. I don't know if Nick, if you want to pop it up, it's the uh, it just pretty much shows the bulls and bear. Yeah, that one there. So. I, I thought this was important to show just because of longevity we're talking about from whenever you start investing to the end. Uh, what is the experience? And the blue, the blue are bull markets and the orange are the little orange are the bear markets or or, uh, or, or recessions. The recessions essentially are the gray lines going up and down. So you can see yeah. the thickness of the line, meaning how long was that recession? Um, but what you need to take away from this is uh, – investing throughout your lifetime everyone's every call we get is the worry about is the is it is this the end is this the market is, is it going to go down um so you're everyone's worried about that orange there that tiny so to speak decline and and it could last a couple of years right and but some of them are big you know some of them are big some of them yeah. are big but look at the blue what are you missing you're getting you know one of those is 550 percent the other one's like 400 percent so you you missed out on a 20 30 percent and you're trying you're worried about a 20 30 cent decline but you're not exposing yourself to a 500 percent return just in one of these time periods right yeah. so throughout your lifetime being intelligent and not just you know, buying all sorts of create. I don't want to mention names, but, um, you know, we've seen the investments that blow up and that's not, we're trying to keep folk, people focused. And the big picture here is, you know, stay invested in intelligent things, work with a fiduciary, try and remove the emotion from it. Yes, you can still own those 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 crazy names, but not in your main portfolio. Put yeah, that off need, to the side. You need a plan because when yeah. the shit does hit the fan, right, you need to know you're going to be okay and you've got a plan for when that happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just like you can have your cheat day with food, you can have your cheat portfolio where it's a smaller amount, right? Uh, but yeah. but it's there for fun. It's there for that that gambling high that you get when you pick that right stock and things like that. Yeah. So 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 at this stage of the game, if you are fully retired, perhaps it makes more sense to have stocks paying you dividends. Um, so God forbid the market does have a, some sort of a decline. It's okay. Let let the market stabilize. You're still getting income. So you don't you're not forced to sell it some version of that. You're still going to get pretty decent returns, you know, in the big picture. But, you know, you don't just need to own only tech or only small cap or something like that. So some version of that. But we figure it out. We make it per person for what they can handle and what they need. Um, that's how it works. But uh, I just had to show this because I think it makes a lot of sense in the big picture. Oh, this is great. Yeah. I, I think this whole conversation has been really fascinating, eye opening. <laughs> Um, yeah, I hope so. I'm looking forward to the show notes, Nick. You're, you're going to have your work cut out for yeah. you. But. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but we always – so thank you, Ryan, for coming on and, yeah. and sharing this. Thank it you. Was, it was great. Um, yeah. And I like that we could tie it back to finance enough at yeah. the end there. I hope enough yeah. for our listeners and viewers. But um, we always like to close out with something new. We can leave the listeners that maybe maybe – book they haven't read or show that i mean the blue zones you talked about that already but something they can look into or get excited about outside of this anyone want to volunteer or, or, or have so, something so i could go first yeah. uh and this is we're recording this uh, friday morning uh yeah. it's 11 a.m a little after 11 a.m right now there was a live earthquake during our show today i don't I know if you saw me. yeah My, everything is that the whole true? building I, well, I my phone happen. is blowing up and uh, yeah. everyone is, is, I see earthquake. I haven't really read, 
But uh, yeah, the whole building shook, and I was like, "This is this is it. We're recording it, and this is it." <laughs> I, I would. I that's so funny. You said I saw the wow. screen shake, and I'm like, "What the hell is going on here?" I don't think here? I yeah. felt anything. Yeah, I here, absolutely did. Everything shook here. There, there was, was this- one in in uh, there was one down in Virginia, like probably ten or fifteen years ago, that felt it all the way up and down the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. Four, oh yeah, four point eight magnitude earthquake. Yep, look at that. I see it. I see there it. you go. Yep. Live in New Jersey. It says New Jersey, uh, New York, and Connecticut. Felt it. <laughs> yep. There you go. Yep. Lots of text messages here. Well, that's that's a fun one. Um, yeah, that was. Well, great. I, talk about. I just wanted to celebrate. Camera, right. I just wanted to celebrate <laughs> opening day baseball. Uh, you know, I I play in a. Uh, I think this is a timely topic too, but, um, you know, the last two Sundays we've had our our opening week practices. This weekend's the the opening game um that we have but it's you know it's a men's league i don't know anyone in the league but i get out there i'm you know sunday mornings i'm moving my body playing with a bunch of people that um you know i've never now i know them because it's my second season but uh you know com- we talked about community exercise getting fresh air oxygen uh so you know that's good, and then the fact that baseball's back—it's my favorite sport. So yeah, happy to share. Talk that. about talk about something at least for me that I both dread and enjoy at the same time. I play in this old men's volleyball league. I played volleyball in college, and um, you know it's 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 definitely a very muted version of volleyball in college. Uh, but you're still running around, jumping, et cetera, and and it's from eight to like eleven on a Thursday PM. night. Yeah, yeah, and Those so. Going there, I'm dreading it. Leaving there, I'm dreading it. The next morning, I, you know, I'm like, oh God, I'm just so exhausted. I can't do this. But when I'm doing it, you know, all my worries go away. It's like a full reset. Uh, you know, it's 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 great. It's one of those things that um, uh, I'm happy I started up again, uh, even though there are so many times where I'm like, oh, I really have to do this right now. My cousin played in a hockey league, and there's a lot fewer hockey rinks than there are you know, baseball fields out there, right. Or, or gymnasiums that you could set up a volleyball net and, uh, their, their puck drop times were like 10 and 11 PM oh. so that he wouldn't even get home, uh, till, you know, Miserable. one, two in the morning at times. Yeah. That was brutal. But probably well worth it. <laughs> yeah. Got anything just, for us, Ryan? Yeah. I mean, you shared um, a, a wealth of knowledge already, so yeah. I'm not going to put you on the spot too much. Nothing. But. I mean, no, I just got back from a nice vacation, take my daughter to Italy in like a month. So what part of Italy are you going to? Uh, we're going to, we're going to fly into, uh, let's see, near, near, right near Sorrento, the Amalfi coast, that whole, that okay. whole section there. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. And, awesome. and in Rome and do some cooking classes and just have some fun. Cool. Check it out. How long you're going you to be close to one of the blue zones. Yes, yeah. exactly right. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in and listening. We hope you enjoyed that. Learn a thing or two that you can implement in your uh, daily routines and we'll see you next month. Yeah. Please uh, like, follow, comment. If you're a doctor, pr- try not to beat us up too much in the comments. Uh, <laughs> right. Also, we'd love to have you on. Uh, it's a great topic. Uh, but yeah, please like, follow every all the, the fun stuff to, to fool the algorithms into uh, thinking this is the, uh, the next new hot podcast. So, uh, but uh, thank you for your time. Thanks for your time, guys. Appreciate it.